this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 316, where we're looking at the Kaladesh spoilers from PAX. PAX has really become the central place for Wizards to do major announcements in the fall. It is a public-facing event that is more than just tournaments. It has a lot of things aimed at getting new players in, introducing Magic the Gathering to the giant video game community that is out at Penny Arcade Expo, which is really interesting to me. I went out to Gen Con and Wizards really wasn't there. They weren't going after the board game community the way that they had in their roots, and now they're targeting that giant, growing, huge video game community with a huge presence at PAX. Now, this is somewhat related to the fact that they're located here in Renton, Washington, not that far from Seattle. But additionally, this is a giant market for them, and it was very successful last year. This year, they rented out the Paramount Theater, this giant historic theater in the middle of downtown Seattle, adjacent to the convention center. Now, they're doing some really cool stuff there, if you want real-time updates, I definitely recommend following me on Twitter or on Instagram at Sartorus. That is where I'm posting things as they happen. This is a recap a day later, and I'm going to do a full recap at the end of the convention. But if you are also out here at PAX and you just want to say hi, please definitely drop by and say hello. Jumping into Kaladash, the big focus of yesterday, Friday, was the developers panel, uh, which also had a graphic design person on it. It was a very, very good panel. One of the best panels that Magic and Wizards have put on. This one focused on where Kaladash is, wh what its roots were, the idea of technology, tinkering, kind of that uh, steampunk thing going on, and then also vehicles. The idea of having a new resource has been around for a long time, but never made it out of R&D. Originally, Mark Rosewater wanted to put a new resource into the set, originally known as Bacon, as a playtest set, which we now know as Mirrodin. These are some of the early cards that use this new resource. This resource has made it into Kaladesh, as energy. Now, these are kind of the power levels of different uses of energy. You need a card with a activated ability on it to use energy. Almost all of the cards that use energy create energy, at least when they're initially cast. You may also need to find a way to create other energy. And some cards like this, Puzzle Knot, create energy but don't actually use it so that you can power and use some of your larger energy cards that are out there a little bit of an idea of what you're going to be able to do with energy on practical cards die young sorcery speed it could have just said minus two minus two but the fact that it's energy here is very interesting it gives you a lot more flexibility you could spend other energy that you've collected in this turn or other turns. It doesn't go away at the end of turn the way that mana does in order to kill a larger creature. Or if you only need to kill a 1-1, one, one, or if you just need the energy, you don't have to spend the energy to give minus one, minus one. Other creatures, such as this rock, are able to get plus one, plus one counters out of it. And for two energy here, they get that plus one, plus one counter, but they're also able to tap one target creature a defending player controls. So this is a very tempo-y card. Etherworks Marvel looks like one of the more fun EDH cards that's gonna be in this set. For six energy, you basically get to cast something free from the top of your deck. How difficult it's gonna to be to get energy, we don't know so far, but my guess is it's gonna be very difficult. There may even be an over-the-top ramp deck that uses something like this in standard. It's way too early to tell until we get much, much, deeper into the spoilers. At the top end of the energy curve, it tops out at eight. This is a seven energy card that gives you six, six creatures at instant speed. Very, very powerful there. 
What I like about this card in particular is that it is on curve at a 2-3 and it gives you energy whenever a land enters the battlefield. So this is an energy producer that is also going to work as an early chump blocker to help stabilize the board until you get up to that crazy stuff later. Somebody in R&D department must have been watching Fury Road recently because we got vehicles. Vehicles look like fun. They've got this new border. They kind of look like creatures, which is slightly confusing to individuals, or at least to me. The first time I look at this, I assume that it is a creature, but you've got to read the entire card here. Under the crew area, it lets you know that it doesn't actually turn into a creature until you tap a number of creatures you control with total power equal to the crew number. Then it becomes an artifact creature. It is not an artifact. Well, it is not piloted, which is an interesting choice. So it's not able to just be mass artifact destroyed early on. It can only be artifact destroyed after it turns into an artifact creature. I, I like the fact that they made them a little bit more solid by not making them artifacts until they are powered up. We've got several different vehicles already shown to us. The curve gets higher and I've heard already that there's at least one or two of these that are going to be standard tournament playable and one may even be an all-star at the top of the curve. The dragster is really interesting to me just because it's a 6-1 trample haste. Now crew is a little bit difficult to get in there but if you've got a bunch of small little 1-1s that you've been generating, powering this up may not be that difficult at all. It reminds me a lot of a ball lightning it's one higher on the curve, but Ball Lightning really enabled some super powerful, fast aggro strategies. And that's where I'd be watching this dragster is for aggro decks. And the vehicles just get bigger and bigger. At a five casting cost, we've got flying and it deals damage to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls when it enters the battlefield or when it attacks. It does take three power to power it up. Now, one of the big questions that people have asked is, can a vehicle pilot a vehicle? Yes, vehicles can pilot vehicles. Kind of weird, a little bit odd flavor wise, sounds cool, should be fun. I don't know why you would ever want vehicles to pilot vehicles, but it does seem cool to have like a spaceship driving the Death Star around. We've also got another mechanic that came out yesterday, which is Fabricate. Fabricate is the ability to create 1-1 one, one servo artifact creatures or put a plus one plus one counter on the creature as it comes out. So the creature is either bigger or it comes with a friend, an electronic little familiar there that's going to help it out. Now, when you need creatures to pilot vehicles, I see why these two could work really well together. You could have a high fabricate number and hopefully there's something that plays with these plus one plus one counters that we're seeing on a lot of different cards in this set. Uh, what do you think of these cards so far? What are you excited about? We're gonna have pictures of the Inventors Fair that's coming up this weekend at PAX on my Instagram. To race into the future of Magic the Gathering, subscribe to the channel to help me make more great videos. Please become a patron. Thank you to everybody who's over there supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Until next time. Choose the cards wisely.